Hi all, in this video, let's learn some of the interesting points regarding the ReactJS. So let's see one, one by one, point by point. Do we need to name the custom hooks with the use? Prefix should be used or not? So let's discuss point by point. So firstly, the first point is all hooks of React hooks will start with the use use as a prefix. So that is a convention. So the same should we follow for the our custom hooks? Yes, for our custom hooks also here, I have used a custom hook. This is use fetch. All our for custom own hooks also should start with the use as a prefix. So the reason behind this is, this is an important convention. React needs to differentiate whether this is a normal function or this is a hook function so that it needs to apply the rules of hooks. So there are uh, two rules of hooks. I have done a video on that. I will keep that at, in the end cards. So React needs to apply these rules on this function to make sure that this hook will follow these rules. So that's the reason the naming convention is very much important. So for our custom hooks also, we need to keep use as a prefix. So this is the reason why we need to use use as a prefix so that we are making sure that React, uh, we are providing enough information for the React to apply its rules on our hook. So this is the first point. And coming to the second point, there would be a difference uh, between the named export and default export. Let me explain you. So this is a function. So there's a component. Uh, this component is exported with a default, okay? And Another component, this is a named. Now this is only exported. There is no default here, okay? The difference between here is that while you are importing, then you can find the difference. So let's try to import them. So if I want to import the default import, so directly I can use like this, default export. So here I can do like this. If I want to import a named export, then you need to use a flower place like this. So here you can define your named export. So in this in this way, the difference would be there. The named exports should be defined like this. Like, uh, yep. you, can, you can see the difference. The default export you can directly give like this. The named exports you need to give that in a flower place. So that's the difference. And in a file, you need to have only default export, only one default export. And you can have n number of normal exports. Named exports can be n number. There is no restriction for that, but the default export can only be one. So that's the reason if you understand it clearly in the React import statements also, React is a default export. So this is a default export. So you are importing that like this and all other are named exports. So that why we are importing them with the flower braces. So this is one also an uh, interesting and important point to be noted. So coming to the next is synthetic events, React synthetic events. So we need to understand what all these synthetic events. Uh, let me uh, try to explain you a few points before that. So before we need to discuss uh, about synthetic events, we need to discuss how React will uh, treat the events. So whenever an event was occurred, so React will listen every event from the DOM and it will receive that event and it will wrap that event with the, some interface that interface would be similar to the native browser events so that we can do all the operations as we do in the normal event. So like prevent uh, default and stop propagation, all these things also we can do. So why, why the React is taking all these events and why it is wrapping and why it is giving an internal interface same as the native uh, browser events means. So think a situation. So if we have uh, like, for example, on clap. So think this is an event. So if this event has different names in different, in different browsers, okay? If this event has a different names in different browsers, then we need to create implementation for this event in different implementations for different browsers. So that will be a lot of mess. So we can't do this for all the events. So that's the reason this wrapper, what this wrapper will do means it will register for all the different names for the same event. So this wrapper will, ideally this wrapper will register for all the different names of same event for all the browsers. So that's the reason 
this wrapper will help us not to do the above thing so if an event has a different name in different browsers usually we need to implement the functionality for all the events with the different names in all the browsers so instead of that that's the reason the react is wrapping this and it is registering with all the different names with the same event so that's the reason we we are, we no need to do the above task we no need to implement the functionality in different browsers okay this wrapper is is a synthetic event we are not going to implement anything here so just we need to understand how the events are handled in the react synthetic events are nothing but this mm -hmm. what what's the advantage of this synthetic event means so react can make sure that react applications can work in all the cross browser applications so it will provide the cross browser application feasibility so the main point here we need to understand is whenever an event was triggered so now the real dom is not going to handle it react is going to handle it in terms of synthetic events so not only uh, this cross browser fun uh, application functionality we have one more advantage by using this react synthetic events that is uh, react will reuse this event object so as on when an event has occurred react will use this object again so to improve the performance gains we will be getting some performance gain so it will it will look, pull pull the event object which is already done and it will reuse that which in terms increases the performance gain so these two are the main important advantages we'll be getting with the react synthetic so we'll be getting two advantages with this react synthetic things so number one is so the first one is react will uh, give us cross browser functionality so this will be handled by react there is no need for us to write the code but just we can understand what are this synthetic events exactly how the react is handling this synthetic events in build so any event if you trigger uh, real dom is not going to handle it react will handle it it will wrap this events with the neg negative native browser events and then it will make sure that it will work in all the cross browser functionalities not only this also it will it will reuse will uh, reuse the event object to improve the performance so these are the two advantages we'll be getting with the react synthetic events so we no need to write or any any of the code this would be handled by default by Re react so just we need to understand what is this synthetic events in uh, in terms of interview questions also like like that so coming to the fourth point is strict mode what is this strict mode so strict mode is like uh, for example it will uh, add this is all this was added in uh, uh, let me add few points like strict mode was added in the version of 16.3 so this is also same as fragments we'll be using fragments right here so these are the fragments okay so these are also uh, strict mode is also same like fragment it will not render any uh, visible ui it will not show any visible ui it will just uh, provides some visual feedback it means it will activate some additional checks and warnings for the potential problems in the application so uh, we no need to worry that it will only work in the development mode it will not work or impact the production build so we can enable this shit mode anywhere throughout the application or just to the components which we want so here this shit mode is applied only to the component 1 and component 2 not to the header and not to the footer this and only to the component one and its children component two and its children this strict mode is applied to those things so with the help of this strict mode uh, we can identify and uh, detect some of the problems in the application so let's see what are uh, those things like uh, if you're using any deprecated methods it will uh, alert us it will give a warning for us not to use them so uh, and also uh, let me show you that in the official website so this is the official website we have so in this official website uh, we have a couple of points here so what how does the strict mode helps us in these various types it will be helping so it will identify a component with unsafe lifecycle methods so this is usually happens when you are still using the class components so i hope uh, most of us were migrated to the uh, react hooks so 
even though if you anyone using the react component life cycle methods if you are not using the life cycle methods in in a particular order or if you are not aware of how to use them in properly so it will give us an alert like this we are not using unsafe life cycle methods so like this it will help us in certain ways so that's the reason we need to use this strict mode not the, just this five points in future it will be adding many more functionalities as on when the uh, react upgrades to the next levels so in the strict mode also they will be adding some of the more rules to make sure our code is uh, correct in all the ways so the main advantage to use this uh, react strict mode is in the future we'll be working on the concurrent mode of running the react application so for that if you use strict mode from now so this will help us uh, it will make us easy to work with the uh, co uh, concurrent uh, uh, rendering in future so this is all about the strict mode so it's uh, important to use this strict mode in our uh, in our applications so it will identify what are the potential errors we are doing so and it will uh, sh show these are the examples so uh, let me tell this yeah these are the life cycle methods if there is any unsafe life cycle method is happen it would be warning for us it, it will warn us not to use them so this is all about uh, the why we need to name our uh, custom hook with the use prefix what are the differences with the named export and default export this a difference will come in terms of importing them and about synthetic events and uh, what's the state mode more so this is all about this video thanks for watching Please subscribe for more videos.